Hi, I'm Andy Byford. I'm the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of the Toronto Transit Commission. So I've been here now since uh, November 2011 and the CEO, Chief Executive Officer, since April of 2012. And it's certainly been a roller coaster ride since I got here. My previous uh, job was over in Sydney, in Australia, for RailCorp. Uh, and I was there for three years as the COO, the Chief Operating Officer. Um, and my job ma there mainly was revolving around well, running the railway, a huge railway that covered the whole of New South Wales, 300 and seven stations um, and most of it was involved with uh, driving up customer satisfaction customer service so it was a hugely enjoyable time I really uh, had a good time down there I think I'd still be there had the TTC job not come up but I'm certainly glad I made the move and it's certainly been busy since I got here I describe my job as 24-7, it's full on. Uh, I'm running the third largest transit system in North America after New York City and Mexico City. So um, what makes this job so interesting is the fact that it's multimodal. We have buses, subways, streetcars, wheeltrans, and the SRT, the Scarborough Rapid Transit. And that was one of the reasons I came to Toronto, actually, that it's good career development for me. My background is primarily a railwayman on uh, British Rail, London Underground, Rail Corp, and now here. So this is great to actually have five modes. So the way I describe my job is to um, drive up customer satisfaction, but drive up performance and safety throughout the whole of the TTC, all aspects of the TTC. My job is to uh, drive, motivate, inspire and lead 12,500 fantastic employees of this organization um, and progressively deliver better services, better value for money uh, and better customer satisfaction for the people of Toronto. As far as dealing with odd days down here, um, I guess I've been pretty lucky. We've I've run into, uh, we had to work through some uh, serious delays. Uh, the most recent was the rainstorm a few weeks ago. Uh, unfortunately for us, we got caught on the wrong side of the, the delay, uh, being that Union Station was closed. Uh, we were over on the university side, and we were supposed to get relieved on the Young Street side. We ended up uh, staying over there. We were supposed to finish around 6 o'clock that evening, and we ended up working till almost 1.30 in the morning. Uh, that is a little unusual. Uh, unfortunately for us, they couldn't get a relief crew over there. Uh, so and we had to stay with our train. You can't, uh, you can't abandon the train. There's nowhere to go. We had to keep the train in motion. We didn't have anywhere to park it. So uh, we did okay. We, uh, we had some chips for dinner. I mean, potato chips, not french fries. <laughs> and. Uh, we hung in there. They, they took care of us as far as the next day. We, because uh, we finished so late, we couldn't come in and do our morning shift. Uh, but we did make it in for the afternoon shift the next day. So the most recent kind of emergency situation that we've had here is uh, a couple of weeks ago we had a, a major flood in the, the most amount of rain, so rain that fell in the, in Toronto, which affected uh, the signals, the subway service. And my train was affected in the term that I was uh, stuck outside of the Andrew station for almost two hours with passengers. So in, in trying to keep them uh, entertained and not to get too uh, panicky, you know, I kind of made a consistent announcements. And eventually we lost power to the signals, lost power to the power rail that runs the train. So eventually on uh, authorization from the transit control center, I had to take the passengers to the tunnel up to get them up to Downsview Station. Okay, I guess the most interesting uh, emergency situation I was involved in was being here when we had the big blackout many years ago. I was at Finch Station, just waiting for my train to come in. All I had to do was take it to Wilson Station and I would be finished for the day that wasn't to be standing on the platform minding my own business and suddenly the lights went out. They came back on for a split second and then they went out for good until the emergency generators started up. And everything that happened after that, everyone was getting organized, deciding who was going to do what and I ended up walking with another supervisor from Finch to Eglinton Station in the tunnel activating each power cut station to make sure there wouldn't be a big surge when the power did come back on. So it was kind of neat. So I got to see all those places in the tunnel I wanted to see, but you never can because you're going by too fast. 
So when you're walking, you say, well, let's take a look at this. I just want to see this. And, but it was very dirty. And I was coughing up black when I got down to Eglinton. I don't know how those track guys do it. I've never really had an emergency as such uh, while working as a subway operator. But I had a few incidents which, uh, which is not, not what you consider a normal day. Like for instance, just recently, about a month ago, I had a little girl come down at St. Clair station with her parents. And as she tried to get onto the train, her leg slipped in between. The very same thing had come into the news a couple of months before that. And I heard people screaming, uh, shouting on the platform. And I, I saw people in the mirror there waving out their hands. So I immediately gave my partner a bell and told him to reopen the doors. And I popped my head out the window and then somebody told me, yeah, she's okay now. She, she, uh, her leg was stuck between the train and the platform. Well, if the doors had to close and the train started moving off, it would have been a very serious injury, if not a fatality. That's just one incident. Well, um, there was a security incident once where uh, somebody pressed the PAA and there was a fight on the train and there was a passenger bleeding profusely and I thought that basically he was the one who was the victim but later on after talking to passengers we called for security and things like that but that guy disappeared and after talking to the passengers around I came to know that the guy the guy who was bleeding was not the victim he was the, the actual perpetrator of the of the incident and he got beaten up by the victim so that that was a happy ending for me. Yeah. 